What's going on everybody and we're back again today and today we're going to be having a look at Siemens TIA Portal but we're going to be having a look at the WinCC aspect of Siemens TIA Portal. This means we're going to be having a look at how to create an HMI and how to set it up inside of Siemens TIA Portal. Before we get started, what I'd like you to do, once again, I'd like you to give the video a like, comment below, and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're not watching us on YouTube, head over to our YouTube channel right now and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of our new videos. Right, let's get into today's subject. So today we're going to be having a look at HMIs, but ultimately HMI and SCADA systems. What an HMI is, an HMI is a human machine interface, and a SCADA system is a supervisory control and data acquisition system. Both are mainly visual indicators for the operators and the maintenance department to tell us how the system is running and to allow us to actually interface with the PLC without us getting into the nitty gritty side of things by getting into the actual ladder logic design. This allows the operator to simply control the process via a screen and receive all sorts of updates and information from the process from that screen itself. Now the hardest thing about HMI programming is the fact that it's graphics, which means everybody on the shop floor who's going to be working with that machine is actually going to see your HMI design, which means if it isn't up to scratch, a lot of people are going to notice. With PLC programming, you can design your ladder logic any which way you want it to because there's not going to be that many people actually interfacing with the program. But with an HMI, it's a completely different ball game, so we have to spend quite a bit of time and a lot of attention and care in making sure that the screens look good and they work well. Today, what we're going to be having a look at is how to create a WinCC project inside a TIA portal, how to set up an HMI alongside our PLC and network the PLC together, and then we're just going to create a basic screen just with a button and a lamp, and we're just going to control that lamp with a button. Unfortunately, I don't have an HMI available right now, so I can't download from my Siemens S7 1200 PLC to the HMI so what we're going to be doing is we're going to use a simulator which means we're going to have to use internal tags when it actually comes to tagging our HMI but we'll come on to that shortly. Let's get into Siemens TIA portal and let's start developing this project. Okay so I've got Siemens TIA portal open at the moment what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select create a new project and I'm going to call this HMI test and we're just going to say create. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to upload the PLC hardware into our software here and then I'm going to add the additional HMI to the actual software. So to upload the hardware just go to configure a device, add new device and then from there you want to select controllers because we're looking at the PLC aspect to start with, unspecified CPU and it's a version 3 that we're working with select add and this is going to add a blank cpu where we can now detect the hardware from our ethernet connection okay so next just select detect it'll bring up the hardware detection menu we're then just going to search for our plc on the ethernet network and then upload the hardware here we go select our plc and then select detect once that's uploaded what we're then going to do is add an hmi to this project to add the HMI, what we can do is we can now go to portal view and then say add new device, HMI, and then we can select it from this area here. And we're just going to select the somatic basic panel and I'm just going to select the 6 inch series, the KTP 600 basic, and we'll just select the most recent one. Select add. Just like our hardware with our PLC, this is now going to add the HMI to our project. Now what we'll see on the left hand side is two folders. One folder for our HMI project, one folder for our PLC project. Now you'll notice here a device wizard has popped up to allow us to create our screen through this little help wizard. I'm just going to cancel this, we're just going to create it from a complete fresh. Say OK to that and now our HMI is going to be added. And there we go. We've now got two folders. We've got one folder for our PLC here, and we've got another folder for our HMI over here. This is all part of the one project HMI test. Now, if I just go to my devices and networks, and I just double click that, you'll see our PLC, our CPU 1214C, and you'll see our HMI all a part of this project. Now, what I want to do is I want to link these two together. I want to connect these two via our ethernet. 
So to create the connection, what we can actually do is simply just drag and drop. You'll notice on our PLC and on our HMI, you've got this green square available. This green square is your Ethernet port, your Profinet port. And all we need to do here is simply just select the green square on the PLC, click and drag that over to the green port on our HMI. That there is now gonna create our Ethernet connection. Now to set up the connection on the HMI side, double click the connections folder over here and select add new. We'll call this PLC and we'll use the communication driver S7-1200. The S7-1200 driver is in here, but we also have things like Alan Bradley, Mitsubishi and other somatic drivers. We're just gonna leave it as the S7-1200 because that's what we're connected to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my ethernet addresses to match what my PLC is currently set up as. My PLC, if we just go to device configuration, double click our CPU, my PLC is 192.168.10.1. Now, if I go over to my connections, what I can then do is change the 1200 to 10.1. And then inside of the HMI side, I can then change this to 10.2. When you're working with Ethernet, you've got to make sure that this area here, the addresses both match 192.168.10, but the individual address, the one and the two, they are different. Once that's done, what we can now do is get into actually programming the HMI. So if I just collapse the PLC folder, this will leave me with the HMI area here. If I go to device configuration, there is the HMI. And if I just double click this HMI here, I can then go to Profinet Ethernet addresses. And there you can see it's been given the address 10.2 from our Profinet connection that we just did earlier. What we can then do from here is we can then go further down this list and we can create what we call HMI tags. HMI tags are simply like PLC tags in the PLC program. It allows us to identify certain objects on the HMI, such as buttons, lamps, motors, pumps, etc. on the HMI to certain tags, whether they are internal to the HMI, like Mbit addressing to a PLC, or whether they are actually looking at addressing on the PLC itself. So if I open up my HMI tags folder, I can then double click show all tags. And currently what we should see is an empty tag area. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to add in two tags. I'm going to add in input one, and then I'm gonna add in input two. And these data types, these are gonna be bits. So I'm just gonna select that as a Boolean and that one there is a boolean now you'll notice that the connection is referencing the internal tag if i expanded that it'll then pop up and say we can also connect to the plc if i selected the plc here and just check the box there what it's then going to ask me to do is enter the plc tag that i want this to connect to so if in our plc program Let's open up our main OB1. I had a program that was simply just a contact to a coil, like so. And here we had M10.0 going to M100.0. These are now PLC tags. So if we open up our PLC tag folder, go to show all tags, there's our tag one and there's our tag two, looking at M10.0 and looking at M100.0. If I just close that down and go back to my HMI tags now, if I expand the PLC tag folder and then open up PLC tags, go to default tag table, there are the two tags that I created there. So what I could then do is tie input one to tag one and input two to tag two. This would then create a link between our PLC tags and our HMI tags. So whenever the PLC tags turn on inside of the ladder logic, they will then react to our HMI screen. However, I'm not currently connected to an HMI. Because I'm not currently connected to an HMI, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply select this connection as an internal tag. Because what I'm gonna do on this program here is just gonna be a basic button to a lamp, button to a lamp. When the button turns on, the lamp changes color. And that there is gonna reference these two tags here, input one and input two. And we're gonna do this via the simulator. Once I can free up an HMI from our trainer rigs, I can then connect it to an HMI, connect it to the PLC, and link up the PLC addressing to the HMI addressing on further videos. 
So here, all we're going to do, just collapse our PLC one folder. We've created our two tags. Now we want to create our very first screen. Now we're not going to create anything to do with the template just yet. I'm going to cover that on another video. All I'm going to do is just create a basic screen and we're just going to set this up to have two buttons, two lamps. Open up your screen folder. And then in the screen folder, you'll see screen one. We can rename this. So if I wanted to rename this, I might call this home. And now this becomes our home screen. Double click this and you will then see our screen appear and the HMI touch panel appear around it. This isn't the entire screen here. This white border, that there is the actual screen. So any sort of design work that we want to do, we want to do this inside of this area here. Now, if I just go to the properties, what I can actually do is I can actually change the properties of this screen. You'll notice that this background color is like a dark color. What I might want to do is I might want to change it to a white color, or I might want to change it to a yellow color. Usually what we want to do is we want to try and keep these neutral colors. We want to try and stay away from the bright colors like whites and yellows and bright blues and bright greens, etc. And the reason for this, especially with white screens, is eye strain. If you've got operators looking at HMI panels all day and they're staring at a white screen, a bright white screen, that there can cause eye strain. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's neutral color nice and easy on the eyes so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to choose a dark gray but i'm going to choose a light gray like that there and you'll notice that the grid color actually matches this color here as well so it might become difficult for me to actually try and do line areas of my screens up so what i'm going to do here is change my grid color to black and now i can actually see the actual grid here and what i'm going to do is i'm also going to just zoom in a little bit so i can see the screen a little bit larger there we go. To add objects to the screen, we work from this right hand menu. If I go to the toolbox, you can then see areas that I can add to this screen. And you've got here basic objects, elements, controls and graphics. Open up basic objects, you've got things like pictures, text, squares, circles, ovals and lines. If we then expand elements, we then got a more advanced objects such as IO fields, graphical IO fields, bar charts, etc. Dates and time, which we can then add to our HMI. Expanding the controls. Here we can actually add trends. We can actually add user views, adding in passwords and usernames, etc. So not everybody can access every screen. This is great for like maintenance departments. And then inside of the graphics, what we can then do is we can actually insert graphics from industrial images. This could be things like pumps, valves, motors, etc. All inside of these graphical folders over here. So if I just expand chemical, for example, go to 256 colors. And you can see here different sorts of tanks that are available that we can add to the screen to make it look a bit more appealing when we actually look at these screens. As I mentioned though today, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a button going to a lamp. So to do this, open up elements, and in elements, the second area there will be button. And what I want to do is I just want to click on the button and then select anywhere on the screen, and a button is then going to appear. If I then just go at the bottom here and I go to properties, I'm then going to change the text to this button inside of the general tab. I'm going to change this to input one. And I'm then just going to copy this button and then paste it again. And I'm going to drop it in line with this other button here. And I'm going to call this input two. I'm not too worried about neatness just yet. This is simply just showing you how to add objects to the HMI, how to tag it up, and then how to control it from the HMI. Once I've added those two buttons there, I'm then gonna add in two lamps. And these two lamps are simply just gonna be two circles. So I'm gonna have a circle here. And again, I'm just gonna line it up with the input one button. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste that. Line it up with this button vertically and then line it up with this button horizontally. And that makes sure everything's kept in line. Then what I'm gonna do next is then tag up the buttons and the lamps. Now what I'm gonna do is because I'm using internal tags, I'm not gonna actually use the PLC program. I'm gonna tie input one to input one and the lamp to input one as well. And I'm gonna control the state of input one through the button and we're gonna see the actual state change on the lamp. And we're gonna do the same thing with input two. To set up the tags on the buttons, all we do is we select the button that we want to modify, 
go to events and then we got the options of what event do we want to choose so we got here click press release activate deactivate and change clicking is simply where we just press the button and then let go that there is a click press is simply where we press the button that is when it engages an operation and then release is when we release the button that is when it engages another operation we're going to use press and release so i'm going to select press and then i'm going to select add function drop this down and i want to change a bit state because we're working with bits expand edit bits and then here you'll see set bit what this will do is when i press the button it's going to set the bit turn the bit on when i press the button and then what i'm going to do is in the release is when i release the button it's then going to reset the bit turning the bit off so here where it says set bit it's then asking us to identify a tag just expand this field here and then select input one go to release add function drop this down edit bits and then reset bit input one there we go and then we're going to do the same with input two obviously with the input two tag so i'll then just edit bit set bit input two and then if i just go to the release i'm then going to reset the bit input two That's it. So that's my buttons tagged up. Next, what I want to do is then change the state or change the color of this lamp, this circle here. Again, to do this, make sure the circle is selected. Go to properties. And then inside the properties, what we then want to do is go to animations. And then what we then want to do is then select display, add new animation. It's then going to ask you what you want to do. Do you want to change the appearance or do you want to make it visible or invisible? I want to change the appearance. So I'm just going to select appearance, then say OK. And then it's going to say, right, address it to a tag. And I'm going to address this to input one. And it's then going to say, OK, what do you want to do with this? What's the range going to be set to? Because it's a bit, it's got two states. It's either zero or one. So when this input one is zero, I want the background color to be red to be red and then I want the background color to be green when the input is a logic one and I'm going to do exactly the same for the second circle add a new animation appearance okay to that set it up to input two and again set the range zero and one red and green and that's it. I'm just going to group all these together, line these up a little bit more to the more centralized, like so. And then we're just going to save our project. And now all we're going to do is run the simulator to actually see these change their states. To do this, just select start simulation. What it will then do is it will then begin starting the simulation for this HMI. And it's going to say here the simulation starts with the screen home. That's fine. We've only got one screen anyways. Say OK to that. And here is my HMI available. And this is what it would look like if we actually had the HMI visible to us. What's going to happen is currently input 1 and input 2 internal to the actual HMI. They are both a logic 0 because these buttons are released. So they are reset back to 0. So these lamps are currently red. When I press input 1, it sets the bit to a logic 1. And now my lamp also changes to green because now it is a logic 1. If I let go, it's now red. If I press input 2, that now becomes green. I let go of that and now that becomes red. And that there is just a brief introduction on how to create an HMI inside a TIA portal, how to set up a couple of tags internally to the HMI, and then how to add a couple of objects to the HMI screen, tag them up, and then use them inside of the simulator. So next week, what we're going to be looking to do is how to create a template inside of an HMI, using that on multiple screens, certain screen structures as well, where we place buttons, where we place date and time, how to add a logo into the PLC, and then how to add navigation. 
I look forward to seeing you again next week to stay up to date on the videos. Remember to give us a like on Facebook and that they will notify you when we are premiering our next video. And also subscribe to us on YouTube as that will also notify you when we are premiering our next video as well. I look forward to seeing you again next week. I'll see you later.